N8N is awesome. It's an app that lets you build automated workflows for anything. Use OCR and LLMs to automatically extract structured data from documents. Build an AI-powered researcher to do hours of work for you in just a few minutes. There is a ton you can do with N8N. And the best part, it's open source and free. Yes, like actually free. You can self-host it for personal projects at no cost knowing that your data is private and secure. And running it yourself means you don't have to worry about losing access to your workflows if pricing or terms and conditions change. I'll show you how to set this up for yourself in two ways. The first is to self-host it on your own private server in DigitalOcean. Now, this has the benefit of being available anywhere on Earth and letting you log in from any device. It costs about $5 a month, but you can get $200 in free credits when you sign up, so you can try it out and see if it's for you. The second is to host it on your own personal machine. Now this has the benefit of being completely free, but you'll need to set up a VPN or something like that if you want to access your N8N instance remotely. These are both really good options. We'll start with DigitalOcean's one-click deploy for N8N. This is the quickest way to get up and running. So first, sign up for DigitalOcean if you don't have an account. Go to the DigitalOcean marketplace and then click Create N8N Droplet. This is what we call our virtual private servers. It will take you to the dashboard and you can create your own droplet. First, go ahead and choose the region that you want it to be a part of. So I'll go ahead and click New York and I'll leave it with the default data center. You can leave your droplet in your default network and all of these networks are part of your own virtual private cloud. So you don't have to worry about anybody else getting access to your droplet. Under choose an image, we see that the N8N on Ubuntu image is pre-selected. So we don't have to do anything here. And then we can go down and configure the hardware for the droplet. So we can just leave a shared CPU uh, we can downgrade to a regular SSD, and we can select the lowest specs here because N8N does not require a lot of power. And you can always upgrade later if you need to. You can add a volume here if you need to, but we don't need any more storage space for our use case. And you can automatically back up if you need to. And then down here, we choose an authentication method. So this is how we're going to log into the actual droplet itself, not the N8N instance. So this is how we log into our server to manage it. You can use a password or an SSH key. And I highly recommend that you use an SSH key. This allows the terminal on your local computer to securely connect to the droplet in the cloud. If you do use a password, make sure to use a strong password. You can use a password manager like Bitwarden or 1Password to generate these for you and manage them easily. If you don't know how to add an SSH key, you can click on this new SSH key button and it will give you the instructions for creating an SSH key and then uploading it here. Make sure to add your public SSH key here, not your private one. The private one should stay locally on your computer and the public one should be uploaded here. You can add monitoring and alerting if you'd like, uh, but we can skip that here. And then you can go ahead and change the host name of your droplet. So we can call it N8N droplet. Uh, you can deploy multiple if you like, but we just need one. And then you can define a project that you want to put it under if you use projects to manage your uh, droplets. So now we can go ahead and click Create Droplet. And here is our droplet. You can click this Get Started button, and that will open up a little guide for getting started. But we're going to run through all that in this video, so don't worry. And then we have the IP address of the droplet here. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that. And then we can SSH in and get started. SSH into your droplet via SSH root at and then the IP address of your droplet. Root is the username of the administrator account on the droplet. Your terminal will give you a little warning because you haven't connected to this droplet before, but go ahead and type in yes to continue. And we're brought right into the setup script for N8N. Now you'll need a domain name to set this up. This is so you can get an SSL certificate so all traffic to your N8N instance is encrypted. But don't worry. Getting this certificate will happen in the background, so you don't have to do anything complicated. So go ahead and get a domain. You can get a free subdomain at DuckDNS, or you can buy your own for just a few dollars a year. I'll use dotutorials.fun for this video. Now we need to set up DNS so that domain points to the IP address of your droplet. You'll have to do this wherever you have DNS for your domain, but I'll show you how to do it in DigitalOcean. If you want to do it this way, you have to change the name servers for your domain to DigitalOcean's name servers. Then we can go ahead and copy the IP address of our droplet, go to networking in the dashboard, and then go to domains. You can add your domain here and then set up an A record. And A record is what translates a host name to an IP address. So we'll go ahead and add a record here and we'll forward n8n.dotutorials.fun to the IP address of the droplet. So what you'll do is you'll make an n8n subdomain and then do dot whatever your domain is and then direct it to the IP address of your droplet. 
You can also make an A record for that domain and then a C name record for that subdomain. But if you don't wanna do that, you can just make one A record like in this video. After we set up DNS, we can now ping the domain from our local system and ensure that the DNS record has propagated. So uh, go ahead and ping N8N and then your domain. So I'll do dotfun and uh, we can see the IP address here does match that of my droplet. So this should match uh, your own droplet's IP address. So now we're good to continue with the setup. Uh, so enter the subdomain for your N8N instance. I'm gonna go ahead and leave it the default N8N. Uh, if you do change this, you're gonna need to update your A record subdomain to match whatever you put here. Uh, the domain name, so I'm gonna put dotutorials.fun. And you'll get a warning here if the DNS query for that domain returns an IP address that's different from that of your droplet. Next, we add an email address for Let's Encrypt. Let's Encrypt is a free service to get SSL certificates. Uh, so this email here is just for Let's Encrypt. But we'll go ahead and configure a time zone here. And we can see here that the Docker Compose file that is attached to the setup script is gonna immediately start working and pulling everything we need to set this up. And once the setup is complete, it will let you know and then give you the domain to access your N8N instance. So you can go ahead and copy that. Okay, so if you were following along with that, you can skip ahead to see how to log into N8N and get started building your first workflow. But if you wanna see the local installation, keep watching. So we're gonna do this locally with Docker and Docker Compose. So make sure you have those installed on your system if you don't already. Uh, I'm on a Mac, so if you are, you can use these commands to install Docker and Docker Compose. If you are on Linux, this should work as well if you're using the same package manager. Uh, and if you're on Windows, just go to Docker's website and you'll see how to install it. Now I'm gonna go ahead and make a N8N directory and then navigate into it. And then I'll go ahead and open up VS Code so we can make a Docker Compose file. So go ahead and create a Docker Compose.yaml file and then paste in this YAML. I've added this YAML block to the description, but if you run into any formatting issues or anything like that, you can also find it in the tutorial that I've also linked in the description. So this YAML file sets up a Postgres database for our instance. This will run locally, but you should still change the user and the password to be more secure. And then going down here, we can remove the N8N host and webhook tunnel URL uh, because we are running locally. And then go ahead and add the N8N secure cookie flag to be false. We need to do this because N8N uses secure cookies by default, uh, but we don't have HTTPS set up for this because it's just running locally. So we need to add that to disable the secure cookies. This is not safe for production, so make sure you're doing this in a safe environment on your local system. And that's all we need to do. So open up your terminal and do docker compose up docker compose.yaml and then minus D. And now we can see that everything started up correctly and uh, we can go to our browser and check it out. Go to localhost 5678 in your browser and you'll be redirected to set up an owner account. When you log in, you will get a pop-up to get a free license key and this will give you access to some of the paid features of N8N for your self-hosted instance. So I'll go ahead and do that. Send me a free license key to the email that I used to sign up and then it will give you this link to go to usage and plan to activate your license. So now we're in the N8N dashboard and we're just gonna jump right in and make our first workflow. Workflow is N8N's term for automations. So I'll build one here to show you the essential features and how it works. I'll use a lot of inbuilt nodes and show you how to mock API responses so you don't have to sign up for a bunch of providers and get a bunch of API keys just to see how it works. But if you want an N8N crash course or us to dive into the advanced features, then definitely let us know in the comments so we can make that for you. The example is gonna be a good morning email that is sent to your email every morning. Our example will report on the weather, give you a fun fact, and then a random activity to do if you're bored. But you can easily see how this can be augmented to give you a daily list of to-dos or something like that. So go ahead and click start from scratch, and that opens up this editor. So the way N8N works is that we drag and drop nodes and each of these nodes corresponds to a distinct step in our automation. So the very first thing we need to do is add a trigger node. That's what determines when this workflow runs. For this example, we'll go ahead and trigger manually, but you can see there's tons of options here like on a schedule, on a webhook call, on a form submission. Uh, so it's really flexible. Uh, so from here, we can drag this around. I can scroll up and down. I can zoom in and out in this panel 
and I can always click this button to fit the contents of the workflow. But now we need to determine what happens when we manually execute this workflow. So we're gonna go ahead and click this plus button. So the output of this trigger node will flow into this next node. A pop-up will open with all the nodes you can use. And I'll go ahead and do date and time and add format a date. So this context window will pop up and it shows you the inputs that are flowing into the node, some options for the node itself, and then the output of what happens after this node is executed. So we can go ahead and click execute previous nodes. And if we open up this dropdown, we can see that on every execution, we have a bunch of variables that are really useful. So we have the time of the execution, we have the date, we have variables, we have the workflow ID. So what we're gonna do first is format this date to be human readable. We can pick a particular date, but we can also just drag and drop this here. It's a really cool feature of N8N and makes building these workflows super fast. And as you can see, this tip says that anything inside two curly braces is evaluated as JavaScript. We can then uh, specify an output format. So I just want the month and the day. I'll go ahead and just remove the year here. And we can change the field name. I'll change this to current date. And now we can execute this step. And we see the output is current date and then August 13th. Now we can exit out and that is ready to go. You can see each of these nodes has a green outline and that shows that we've executed them. If I go in here and I wanna change the format to let's just say the month and I exit out, I'll get this yellow border with this triangle and that means that we've changed the settings of this node since our last execution. So the output structure of this node, which propagates to future nodes, could change uh, since we changed the settings of this node. Here, this warning is just telling you that. So I'll go ahead and change that back uh, and just execute the node. So now we have a bare bones workflow, but we said we wanted to do more in our message. We wanted to add a fun fact, a random activity, all that good stuff. So how do we add a network request, for example? So we can go over here to the nodes, search HTTP and we can do an HTTP request. So we can drag that node in here and now we can specify the URL that we want to make a request to. So we use a get request here. We specify this numbers API, which is a free API that gives you random facts about numbers and it does not require any authentication. We can go down to the options and change the response and we'll change the response format to text. So if we execute this step, we can see that we get a random fact. Uh, but as you see here, there's no input connected. So how do we deal with that? This is part of what makes N8N really awesome and easy to use. We can just drag these nodes around. So if we want this to run when we execute the workflow, we can just drag this over here. And now when I execute this workflow, both that date and time will be formatted and we'll do that network request. This is awesome. We can see how building up these workflows by composing nodes gives us a lot of flexibility and is really easy. We don't have to write any code or anything like that. We can just drag these nodes around and configure them as we see fit. But what if we wanna work with external APIs that do require authentication? Now I'll show you how to mock a request so you can build your workflows around APIs without having to go sign up and get API keys, just so you can examine the workflow and make sure it works before you do that. We can use this edit fields node for that. Uh, but rather than drag and drop this and have it open up and then have to close it out and then drag this here, we can just click this dot here and it will automatically link that node when we select it. And we can just manually add information. I'll go ahead and set these two fields. So I'll do location and we'll make that New York. And then I'll add a uh, temperature and add, let's say 75 Fahrenheit. So when we execute this step, that information will be concatenated to the output. So we can use this information in our final response and we can always swap this out for an API call if we want to use an API for this in the future. So it's a good way to just put some mock data into your workflows so you can see how they work. And let's add one more API call before we move on to get a random activity that we can include. So this will show you a really another cool feature of N8N and you can literally just copy and paste nodes. So I can drag to select this node or I can just click on it and then just copy and paste it and it's good to go. I'm gonna move all these nodes up and then connect this new node here and then open it up. I'm gonna go ahead and change the URL to uh, this activity. We see we get this output data with this really weird string. So what's going on here? Remember, we copy and pasted this node, which means we copy and pasted all of the options too. So if you remember, we changed this response format to text. So I'm gonna go ahead and change that back to JSON and then execute the step again. And now we get this structured output. 
It gives us an activity, a type, a price, and a bunch of other useful information. So now we have all of these independent things happening when we click execute for this workflow. So how do we synthesize and combine these results? For that, we can use a merge node. We can see this merges data of multiple streams once the data from both is available. So we'll go ahead and add this in and change the mode to combine. And then we'll combine by position. And then we have four nodes, so we'll change the number of inputs to four. Uh, so we'll exit out real quickly and we'll go ahead and just connect each of these steps to the merge node and then we can open it back up and we can see all of our connected nodes. You'll see we have to execute the previous nodes to see the schema uh, and if you'll notice on the side here, N8N makes this really easy. You can click left and right to go back and forth between your nodes so you can navigate your graph without having to click out and move around and then click another node. So that's really useful. But I'll go ahead and instead of do each of those individually, I'll just execute the whole workflow again. Uh, so we can see successes all around. And then if we open this back up, we can see all the data that's available to us. So this merge node combined all of this information. It combined the current date from the date and time node. It combined the fun fact from the API call and all the other requests into one big object. Now you'll notice this is not a nested structure. So if you have a key overlap, you might run into some errors here. And some of these aren't very descriptive. So I'll go ahead and go back to this node here. And then we can go ahead and scroll down and put the output in the field. And we'll change this to fun fact so that we get a more descriptive key. And now if we go back into this node, we can see that the key name has changed. So now we have all this information. How do we actually structure it? There are a couple different ways to do this, but we can just go ahead and add an edit fields node. And we can just add a field called good morning message. And now we can build up this string. So we can say, good morning. It's currently, it's currently 75 degrees in New York. Fun fact of the day, drag our fun fact in. And then if you're bored, why don't you organize your basement? So we can go ahead and execute this step and we can see the output message there. So now we have this formatted message and you could go up here, you could add Gmail, send a message and email that to yourself. So that requires OAuth2 authentication uh, and it's just outside the scope of this video. So you can see how you can really start to build up these workflows to do a lot of complicated tasks. And now that you have your own self-hosted N8N instance, you're ready to automate your life, or at least the boring parts. If you thought this video was cool, we've got a ton more on our channel. So go ahead and subscribe, and then check out this video by Amit Jatwani on deploying apps, spinning up databases, and controlling other infrastructure with only natural language. In this video, I want to show you something quietly powerful, the DigitalOcean MCP server. It lets your LLM, the one you're already using, do actual things in your cloud account, not just talk about